Good evening. Please take a seat. Thank you for attending, especially on a Friday. We never, you know, we never have events on a Friday. But this was a very special event, and we wanted, um, we wanted them from Italy, too, to arrive on time. So thank you so much for being here celebrating the exhibit Italo-Americana, Italian Illustration Takes on America, and in anticipation also of the Contemporary Art Day, which will be held in October. I'd like to extend you uh, the greetings by the Consul General of Italy, Silvia Chiave, who unfortunately cannot be here with us tonight, but she wishes us all, and especially our artists and illustrators, all the best. Italo-Americana is a collective exhibition narrating illustration through the works of some of the most celebrated and appreciated artists in the American market. 14 designers are showcased, all of whom have brought prestige to the Italian scene and received major awards from American critics, including Society of Illustrators, Art Directors Club, Chicago Museum of Design, and many others. The exhibit presents work created for the pages and covers of various American publications, such as The New Yorker, The Los Angeles Times, The Hollywood Reporter, The Wall Street Journal just to name a few. The illustrators including Francesco Poroli, Mauro Gatti, Ale Giorgini, Emiliano Ponzi, and Olimpia Zagnoli, to name a few, have also collaborated with top American brands, for example, Paramount Pictures, Google, Nike, MoMA, Marvel, and the NBA. These are the best of the new generation of illustrators, a sector that has become the flagship of Italian creativity. I'm truly delighted to present this evening the artist Francesco Poroli. I'd like to give him a very warm welcome from Milan. And Mauro Gatti. And Giorgia Mannucci, art event manager. Who will start the evening with a brief panel discussion. Now, a few words about them. Francesco. Francesco was born and lives in Milan. Since 2000, he has worked as a freelance illustrator and art director. He is also currently the chair of the Illustri Association. It's a very big task. Italian creativity means a lot all over the world, so he has a very big task. His work has been published by the New York Time Magazine, Wired, GQ, and La Repubblica. He has collaborated with important brands including Fiat, Adidas, and many others. His works have won honors from the Society of Illustrations New York and the Society of Publication Designers. Mauro is a creative who ranges from illustration to creative direction and game design. The common denominator of his work is positivity expressed through a style full of humor and inspired by illustration of the 60s and 70s. One of the projects he's most fond of and actually you'll be very happy to hear about it, is the Happy Broadcast, an illustrated space of counter-creative information that spreads only good news, unlike many others. He currently lives and works in Los Angeles, where everyone surfs, so he says, except him. His clients include MTV, Google, Disney, Barilla, Nike, Vans, Vogue, and we transfer. It is a great pleasure to have them here with us this evening at the Institute. Giorgia Mannucci, she's already been here. Maybe some of you remember last year we had a wonderful exhibition by Yet Milan, as she was one of the curators. She's a cultural and art marketing specialist with years of experience in the ultra-contemporary art market with a specific knowledge of pop surrealism, street art, and toy design. Currently, the general manager of artist Joel at Better Studio, and actually, like, I'm very grateful because he's here with us tonight, is a great designer. Jed is here. Can you please stand up? Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. She handles all the aspects of cultural product development, company general strategy and analysis of the market, creative marketing and promotion, public relation events, and sales. Her passion for art also led Georgia to become a member of the Lachman Dawson Council, where she gives tours of the museum collection. 
So thank you very much, all, all of you again, for your invaluable participation. Tonight's event is organized by the Italian Culture Institute with Illustri Festival and Giorgio Mannucci. We hope to see you at the Institute for some of our upcoming events, just to name a few to let you know. So the series Leonardo 500, dedicated to Leonardo da Vinci, will continue throughout the year. In particular, we'll uh, look forward to the upcoming conference, Leonardo da Vinci, Inventing the Future, where we'll be held, which we will be held at UCLA in October, October 18th and 19th. Um, the conference will also feature a screening of the right cinema documentary, Being Leonardo da Vinci, directed and starring Massimiliano Finazzer Flori, who will be in attendance at UCLA. And the author of the film will also be, will be screened in Albuquerque, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Las Vegas, Nevada, and many others, and also in Orange County, for those of you who may know someone there at the Bowers Museum. And also we'll co-present uh, with Sky Arte, the uh, premiere of the documentary, I, Leonardo, and that will be on October the 21st. Now, as a courtesy to others, please kindly turn off or silence your cell phones for the old duration of their little present. It will be a brief presentation, but very significant. Then you will have a chance to talk with them outside in the patio, in the patio and join us for a cocktail. Now, without any further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Giorgia Mannucci. Again, uh, she's also Italo-Americana Art Event Manager. Thank you so much, Giorgia. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and for joining us tonight. Um, as the director already said, I am, I have co-organized this exhibition together with the Italian Cultural Institute and with the Associazione Illustri. And I'm here to, to introduce you why Italo Americana is such a special project. Um, Associazione Illustri organizes in Italy every two years um, illustration festival um, to promote the excellencies about of the Italian illustrators um, whose work are, are, is very appreciated all over the world. Um, and um, I thought of bringing in Illustri Festival here, since Los Angeles is one of the main hub for any type of creative industries. And so many of the Illustri, Illustri artists already had strong ties here with LA creative industries. That's how Italo Americana was born. Uh, the aim of the exhibition is to educate and to promote and exalt the relevance of Italian illustration uh, in the American market and specifically in Los Angeles. So I would like to uh, introduce again Francesco Poroli, who is freelance illustrator, but most of all president of Associazione Illustri, and I would like him to talk about a little bit about the festival and how it was born and... Uh, how 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 he came here? Yeah. Uh, hi everybody, and thanks again for having us here. Um, Illustri was born five years ago um, on uh, an idea from the previous president, Ale Giorgini, um, who had the idea to to make an exhibition that put a spotlight on the Italian illustrator illustration scene. Um, that somehow was very well known abroad. A lot of us had been working with American client or uh, worldwide client um, and received awards that we listened before. But in Italy, it was some kind of uh, still in the shadows. Okay, um, with that exhibition, um, changed everything because. Um, Illustri put their spotlight and even the Italian market started to appreciate more um, the, the work of Italian illustration. And so right now I can say that um, Italian illustration scene is a very big moment and um, here in this exhibition you can see the top of the pop but there are a lot of illustrators in Italian that are doing uh, Incredible good job, and the idea of Illustri is to promote their work with the festival every two years in Vicenza. And uh, between an edition of f the festival and another, working on, uh, on Italy with talks, workshop, uh, portfolio review, uh, to make not only 
um, in the spotlight the biggest name we have, but still to have um, to promote new generation of illustration and try to uh, to make some kind of work with education with schools um, to make uh, to give illustration the place that uh, that is worth for 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 it. And that's it. Yeah, we got a very short video uh, that tells something, that shows some images from the last edition of the festival.
So you can all see why I thought it was a great idea to bring here Illustri Festival, right? It was just, um, it's just incredible how the entire festival actually takes over the city and it's spread out in different sites and... Yeah, because it has usually, um, Illustri is the main exhibition and it features uh, every edition 11 artists. Um, but then we got Saran Illustri for the youngest one. We got every edition of the festival Illustrissimo, who is uh, um, an exhibition dedicated to one international guest. This was Noma Bar. Then we got Malika Favre, then we got Pablo Lobato, big names coming from all over the world. And then a lot of little exhibition around the city in different venues to, to try every, every time to, to involve all the city for one month only about illustration. And if I'm not wrong, there is also now a prize. The prize yeah, Illustri. Yeah, from two years, there's got, uh, we got Premio Illustri. Um, we call it the, the award of the Italian illustration, um, with, uh, an international jury that every year select the best works and we award them with, uh, uh, um, uh something we call a big pencil, a sculpture featuring a big pencil, um, uh, in different categories for, for their works. Yeah. Wonderful. So then we also have Mauro Gatti here with us who is an um, Italian creative that lives and works here in Los Angeles. He, in fact, he's uh, vice president of creativity for the LA-based company Jeep Jab. And since he's from Italy, but he lives here like me, I was wondering what is the difference of working here compared to working in Italy? What is, if you can talk about your experience of, okay. of Italian in LA. Yeah. Um. Uh, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold, so my voice is very nasal. Um, so, I mean, let me let me start by saying that uh, I mean I love Italy. Uh, it's it's my home country. You can see in the video such an amazing, you know, place. Um, and and I was there a month ago for a wedding, and it's every time it's like it's so easy to fall for. The food, the culture, the landscapes, and I love the the, the red strong wine uh, that they have. It's just, but but you know, and this is a big you know. But um, um, if you're like a freelancer, or like if you're like in your twenties and you want to start a company, uh, it, it's very challenging to say the least. I mean, it's like it's like an incredible, you know. Um, a challenge and uh, and 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 a lot of haters. They say that you know Italian people they they don't want to work a lot or there is not enough work uh, or um, and it and it's not true. I mean, it's like the 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 the, the real thing is that you know wh when you come when you come here, at least for me, it felt like the Garden of Eden. You know, so many low hanging fruit, not the apple. <laughs> Just, just other fruit, um, um, and 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 the, the main points, I guess, are three. So y you get you get paid in time here. I mean, you 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 work, you deliver your work, and you get money. You don't have to wait 120 days um, if uh, if you're lucky. The second thing is that um, you you always get a chance to to present your work to a client uh, i mean i've never been rejected like you send an email and they y usually respond and say hey yeah thank you for sending the email in italy i mean you have to know a person that knows that person you know like 20 different you know points of separation um and the other thing, and this is a little bit of a stereotype, but it's like taxes, you know. It's like Italy has very, like, high taxes. So, and even if California has the, you know, highest probably uh, taxes in the country, coming from Italy, it's like a dream, you know. It's like, yeah, I'll pay taxes, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and, uh, and, and for uh, as less as I care about, like, uh, Rewards or like um, recognition of my work, you know. I, I think I had like a, a decent career in Italy. I had I founded my own agency, sold it, and everything. And I never won a prize, you know. Again, no, I'm not 
really into that that kind of thing. I'm kind of a shy person, so I don't like the, to be in the in the in the limelight uh, for any reason. But um, so when I came here, you know, uh, after I work on a on a on a TV show, and in two years I got nominated and won an Emmy. Um, so it's 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 like something that you're like compare this to Italy. It's it's pretty mind blowing when you think about it. You know, I came here um, like you know, like any Italian immigrant, you know, trying to make it here, and you, you know, you won an Emmy after two years, so you're like, okay, you know, why didn't I come here when I was 18? <laughs> you know, it's like, um, but yeah, so so it's good, I think. Like yeah, bottom line, it's like. So you don't think like. You don't foresee in the future to go back anytime soon. Um, I, I mean, you know, the future is always unknown. But what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, it's like it feels like a place where you have more uh, opportunities, and um, and uh, there is like some kind of like um, meritocracy in at, at work uh, that uh, in Italy is becoming more and more challenging, also due to the fact of the you know recession and and. And a lot of other problems that, unfortunately, you have to face. <laughs> <laughs> but we are lucky enough. We do a work that doesn't need translation. That's why Italian illustration can work worldwide with every type of client. Then we got taxation no, no, and everything. Course. But but also, truth to be told, you know, I've been to many festivals worldwide, uh, and uh, and I've never seen anything as. Uh, unique uh, as illustri i've never seen and it's not just the setup and 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 like Vicenza is one of my favorite cities you know like a ut utopian city built by bernini um uh, so it's 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 pretty crazy but to to, to be there and see like people coming from uh, um everywhere in italy and and see the city that is basically like a, it's like a, a canvas you know, like, so you have, like, this incredible, you know, art uh, coming at you that with a layer on top of it that it's more, like, modern. So this, like, blend uh, of, like, history and and uh, and a modern approach to art uh, is just something that is fascinating and goes on for a month. And you see, like, you know, kids, ev ev every generation, yeah. you know, uh, uh, people of any age just enjoying that, even if they don't understand um, but it's 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 incredible, you know. It's like it's not like pushing people into like a warehouse and putting like things on the wall and say this is an art exhibition. That is like really like something unique. Yeah, because uh, illustration is a very democratic language. I mean, everyone is super pop. Everyone can understand it, and everyone can read through our images whatever they want. I mean, I make one illustration, and it got a story for me. But the great fact is that everyone that's watching it can approach their own stories on my image. And so uh, that's for everyone. You don't need too many explanations while you watch something or our works. Right. Um, if anybody from the audience have a question, has a question. Or we can go eat focaccia. I mean, <laughs> it's out. And Seven Prosecco, bed. and Prosecco. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There is a question. Each year, the festival is always in Vicenza. Yeah, the festival is always in Vicenza. Yeah. But you do something about it. Yeah, we, the, the, the ceremony of the world, the Premio Illustri, is in Milan, actually. But we can try to approach all of the city. We've been in Turin, in Rome... Uh, with little events, but the fact it is that in Vicenza we got venues like the one you saw before, like Basilica Palladiana or places like that, that are unbelievable and not so easy to get something like this in another city. And it was born in Vicenza, it stays in Vicenza, and, and Vicenza is an amazing place, so... The next one will be in 2021 because we just closed the, the last one in, uh, in June, um, and so we got two years to think about the next one. So you think that maybe in the future you will do uh, small events all over the city, like more and more every time? Yeah, absolutely, going? because we got between one edition and the other, we got to um, put 
put something on our schedule to keep the attention on industry and so uh, we got the awards and the premio even for that reason but we plan to go we we got a, a lot of requests uh from places all over Italy to do something and so we we start to approach new ideas well that that's wonderful I mean, like it, it's a it, it's a hard question to answer, but that's a good question uh, because when it comes to creativity, we're all different. So it's it, it's it's very hard to like rationalize how the you know how you can like sketch down like like how creativity works. So you know, um, creativity is like a it's like a wild horse. You know, you have to tame it at some point, especially when you're like when you have a deadline. Uh, because I know that a lot of creative people, they spend maybe like a couple of months, you know, to think about something. But y when you work for like commercial project, they give you like three days a week. And so you, 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 the, the most challenging thing is like to edu educate your like creativity to perform on, on such a short notice. Um, but for me, one of the most, that comes to me very natural. It's the only thing that I can do. I mean, I have no other talents. I mean, I can make like a, like a mean carbonara, like every Italian, but that's that's another story. But but uh, the, yeah, it's very important. That what fuels creativity. Um, but to me, one of the most challenging thing has always been bureaucracy. So that's why, again, coming here made everything like very easy. You know, like filing taxes is just I can do it myself. You know, like in Italy, the whole bureaucratic process was like very tiring. Personally, but the creative part is what I what I do. So it's like it's also great to, you know, um, when I had an agency, it was different than being an illustrator. So you have to go to clients and pitch the idea and convince them. That was a very fascinating, like a kind of adrenaline rush uh, emo feeling. You know, when you were like able to sell something um, that comes from within. You know, it's just incredible. That's it, I think. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in the creative process, there are no secrets, and everyone has got his own receipt to creativity. But uh, again, I think that creativity is a, a question of training. You can train that like every muscle of your body. And to me, the, the, the most uh, powerful moment is the, the first one, the sketches, the ideas, and if you work for a commercial, you got three days. If you go work with newspaper, magazine, you can have five hours. I mean, from the first calling from the art director, then to the sketches, and you got to have two different, two, three different ideas, and then they pitch one, and then you go to the final one in digital in five hours. But for how I work, it's perfect, because to me, deadlines are the powerful inspiration of my life. Oh, the, 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 the Emmy? So, yeah, so I, I came here. Um, it's a funny story. I'll, I'll keep it very short, but I was here uh, on a vacation with my dad, uh, like a 25th anniversary of our first trip, and I was in Venice for uh, just strolling in Venice, you know, like any Italian tourist. <laughs> um, and two of my very good friends... Um, had a studio there, it's called Jeep Jab. Um, you know, put your face into funny cards that uh, I think they were famous for something, it was like the the dancing elves or something like that. Um, but they were about to start like a project uh, um, called Storybots. Uh, if you have Netflix, now Netflix bought it. So it's a Netflix original. So if you have Netflix and you have kids or grandkids, uh, you can just search for like Storybots. And so, 
uh, yeah, so I, I started working on, on, on the project and, uh, you know, uh, after two years we got um, nominated. Uh, we got five nominations, we just got one. Uh, and then the next year they won other, and now they have like probably five or six Emmys, but after two years I left. Uh, I was, uh, okay, I have an Emmy. I'm just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, yeah, maybe they will take it back if I stay. I'm like, I just took it and ran it. Um, uh, but yeah, but it's a beautiful show. I mean, I, I mean, it's like one of, not because I worked on it and I was just a little cog in these like, uh, big mechanism that they put together, but um, especially my part that was the digital part was the one that won. So I was like basically, um, I did all the digital uh, side of the the show. Um, so we 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 created this product that was called Classroom. So for like schools, uh, free product for every uh, uh, pre K and K. Um, you know, school, so they could access to like uh, educational uh, activities, empowering kids, doing you know math in a in a different way. So yeah, but now Netflix has it and they killed it. Any, any like authors or like designer illustrator that were like of an inspiration? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so I always say like Ed Emberley. I don't know if you know. He is a very famous like uh, children's book like author here in the U.S. Um, was like a very big inspiration. I mean, Bruno Munari in Italy was such a such a, a god for me um, growing up. Uh, um, one of the, 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 the person that changed my life and Francesco saw that I have the book. So I bought that book when I was at the Center Pompidou in Paris on a, on a school trip. Uh, and it changed my life because at that point I was just, um, just trying to, you know, see what the trend was and trying to, you know, imitate other people's work. But then I saw the, 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 the body of work of, uh, it's called Raymond Sauvignon. Um, it's basically the person that innovated, like, advertising in the, you know, post-war, you know, Europe. Uh, if you don't know it, I mean, you should definitely check it. He brought, like, humor, fun, and character in advertising. Pretty much what we did with Carosello, but before Carosello. Um, so, yeah, these yeah. are, like, my three. To top. me, I would go with uh, just one name, and it's uh, Fortunato De Pero, uh, because I think that... Um, his work inspired me all life long and still does um, and because I think that some of his work that he, he, he did, I mean uh, almost a century ago could be published tomorrow in any magazine uh, everywhere so it's still so contemporary and it's incredible using the shapes, the colors the way they did, that he did Where do I keep my Emmy? <laughs> it's in my closet. I don't. I, I, again, it's not. It, it really, it's like I. It, it was fun. I mean, it was like a great experience, but it's not something that I'm like uh, parading or like. Uh, I, like I was saying today, it's great because now I can go see movie previews for free. <laughs> but uh, beside that, I mean, it's just. Uh, it's just a good thing, you know. I come from a very small town in Italy, uh, so it, it was just great to have like a little piece on my, you know, uh, n local newspaper, uh, and that was my biggest thing, you know, having my mom like, "Hey, look," you know. <laughs> that's my guy. Yeah, that's my boy. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Georgia, Francesco, Mauro, thank you for being such an inspiration. Now, please join us in, you're welcome to take a look at their beautiful work.
and also, of course, all, all the other artists that we had a chance to see there. And you also got an inspiration to go then in two years to Vicenza, which is a wonderful, wonderful place to visit. So you have plenty of time. And uh, I like also to give special thanks to the Institute staff who are here tonight. It's a Friday evening, and we work all week since 9 o'clock, so a special thanks to those of them who are here with us, especially Nicole Fiore, who's been instrumental, <laughs> Stefano, who's here too, and they've been helping you know, with this uh, whole exhibition and working at this institute always uh, with a lot of passion. Thanks again, and join us for our next upcoming, upcoming events. And also, if you're not a member yet, we have special events, members only. You can talk later to Stefano, and also at our front desk. Stefano is always um, passionate about talking our memberships, right? And uh, also at our front desk, you can find our forms. Thanks so much, and enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you.